Okay, hey guys, I'm in the shop today. We got this uh, Gleason. See that? Gleason electric motor. It's 12 volt, three quarter horsepower. And I'm a little worried about. See all the corrosion on here? I'm worried about that getting inside this motor. So, 1800 RPM, beautiful motor. Probably worth a fortune. It won't focus. Okay, there we go. 58 amps. Is that what that says? 20 minute duty cycle. And uh, torque 26.3. I don't know what that is. Is that foot pounds or doesn't say? Um, three quarter DN. I don't know what the DN stands for. Type. Minus 40 Celsius, what is that? Or 40 plus 40 Celsius? Maximum amb ambient temperature, possibly? I don't know. Insulation class F3. I have no idea what all half this means. But what I want to do is get in, pull these covers off. Got four screws, there's one on each side. And I'm going to get in there, blow any dirt out that's in there, inspect it, maybe spray some. Some something in there, WD-40 or something, I don't know what. And uh, re, uh, I can put some silicone paste or something on these rubber plates. And we're going to wire brush the whole thing, sand it, and paint it. I don't want to take the end caps off. I don't want to do a rebuild. You know, the old saying, don't fix what ain't broke. So, and just make sure we get a few more years out of it to... If the corrosion gets inside these motors, that's what kills them. So, and a salt uh, app that's used on a salter. So, what's going to happen? It's going to self-destruct one day if I don't do something. So, okay, let's find out what's in there together. Now, normally, I'd have the music blow blasting right now, but uh, can't do that. So, you can see, oh yeah, corrosion's right in. Right in, it's making its way right in there, and everything inside looks okay. So, there's the brushes. I can see the uh, the commutator. Let me get a trouble light, and I'll bring you in close and have a look at that. I don't know if the trouble light's helping or making it worse. I'm trying to find a good angle. Very hard to. Uh, you can't really see the commutator. There, maybe like that. Too much light. Not enough light. It looks pretty clean in there. The brushes look good. Made in America. Good quality electric motor. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, happy with what I see in here. It's in good shape, but there's rust all around on the inside of this this metal housing. I can see rust right in there if I look on an angle. And probably when I get the other one off, I'm worried about the rust. It's kind of probably made its way past these little rubber things here. And uh, it's definitely made its way in through here, moisture. and So you want to avoid that. A little bit of paint, a little cleanup. I'm going to leave these covers off. I'm going to leave it in the garage, in the shop. See, it looks like that's like a paper gasket. You know, that shouldn't be... Maybe it's a wax paper, whatever it is. There's there's moisture all the way around the inside. So, uh, definitely not good. Okay, let's check the other side. Uh, this may be a good thing or a bad thing. I flipped it over and all this water came out. But because I lent the cover to a buddy of mine for his salter, it's been sitting out there, not really properly covered. I had something on it and the wind blew it off. So, And it's been rained a lot. So it may be a good thing. Maybe it's flushing out the salt that's in there. But it's only a few days ago, so I think that uh, I think it's it'll now that these covers off, the air will get in there and dry it out. So maybe I'll put it in front of the wood stove, light a fire, and let some air blow on it and dry it right out. But it's definitely going to get a paint job, and I may I may take these little screws off. Let me take these contact points off, take the rubber off there. Or, I don't know. 
know if I want to go in any further. We're going to do something. Anywhere the water can penetrate. It can penetrate through here, through these screws here. Same with the other end cap and through here. There's only a few places. One, two, three, all these screws and these two covers here and this end. So what's that, eight, ten places? If you count each screw, maybe, you know, maybe 12, 14, I don't know. So we get a good coat of paint, wire brush the heck out of all this rust and crap and get a good coat of paint on it. And the paint will seal it up a little bit more. So, and the seal looks fine. And I'm going to put some, uh, some silicone paste in there. I'm going to cram a bunch in there. Yep. I don't really, I wanted to price one of these out because I'd like to get one for the other salter, but uh, I almost don't want to know what they cost because I have a feeling they're very expensive, these motors. 12 volt, three quarter horsepower, whoever heard of that. All right, so I went and checked the brushes and you see, you see the lines on there, you don't really want that, so I'm going to get some scotch bright clean that off. I didn't really want to go in this far, but I thought, well, while I'm in here, the brushes are in great shape. Look at that. Lots of brush left, so. These motors work in the cold all the time. They don't really overheat, so. It's got a warning about high temperature, but there's no warning about low temperatures. So that goes back in like that. Spring, and then this pushes it down. These two, two things unwind, and that's your spring. You see that? They roll down like that, and allow it. It'll keep recoiling up while then pushing it down. Kind of neat. I've never seen a spring like that set up like that. All right, so I'm gonna get some compressed air, blow it in there, and clean out what I can, moisture and dirt. Now here's the other side, and there's a lot of grooves in that. But other than that, it's way cleaner in there than I expected. I just blew it out with the compressor and, and hardly any dirt blew around in there at all. So that's a really good sign. I think I'm getting this at the right time. Can't find my scotch bright, so <laughs> maybe it got thrown out. It's the brass bristle brush there. It's pretty, just go gentle on that. That seems to work. These springs are kind of cool. They're very easy to install. You just got to make sure it's centered on there. I've never seen that type of spring on a motor. I've seen all kinds, but not this one. You got to get them to come down at the same time. They kind of unroll. And... And this little clip just hooks on these two hooks. There's two holes on the side. Really smart design. There you go. That's it. That's all that's to it. Lots of moisture in there, though. Okay, I'm trying to bring in close enough to see that bearing down in there. It's a big, beefy bearing in there really well. There you can, there, now you can see, that's, that shaft is probably three quarters or five eighths, somewhere in there. And it's got a big, beautiful bearing. So that's a sign of a really well-made motor, seal bearing. So, that's what I was kind of concerned with, uh, maybe a brass bushing or something in there. And it's probably at the other end down here is the same, same thing. I'm not going to go in there. Nice, beautiful seal bearing. That's the difference between made in China and made in USA. You know, there's some, some thought went behind making this motor, so you get what you pay for. If you go and buy, buy your Chinese stuff for a third the cost or even a quarter of the cost, it's still not worth, you're not saving any money if the motor blows up three, four times in the time that this one keeps going. Uh, the Chinese would have put an aluminum or brass bearing in there and a dab of grease that fit on the end of your pinky 
And once that would dry out, then you get shrapnel debris from that bearing floating around in there and just constantly flying around. It's just like a a blender in there. The dirt keeps flipping around and taking out everything in its path. It'll take out the brushes. It'll take out the uh, the um, commutator. Anything that it rubs on. Uh, and the more debris there is, then the more, again, the more damage there will be from that. It'll just continue and continue until the motor just seizes up or quits working. So once your brushes are worn out, that's the end of your motor. So just a matter of time. This, this because you've got two sealed, beautiful sealed bearings, high quality bearings, probably, uh, I can't read the number on there, but I'm going to go in there and with a magnifying glass, see if I can read the numbers on that. That's, that's going to last for years, so I don't need to go in there. So there we are, that looks a little better. I unbolted the base. I left it on there to the last second, because it kept it from rolling all over the place. And I put the covers back on, did everything I could. Last minute I took this cover off and I did around the edges with my hands. It's a dirty job. I used the little guy grinder with the wire brush. Things like crazy. I tried this little drill here, but it spins too slow. And I used the monster grinder here. This thing's overkill. This, this thing's almost dangerous. It's the biggest grinder we have. It's got the nice big wheel on it. I had to go really slow and I oh and I took the uh, I was able to take this cover plate off. It had two little tiny 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 little bolts go on either end. I just unbolted it, got all that rust behind there, and there's the cover plate. Um, this wasn't painted on the inside, but I will give it a shot of paint on the inside. And uh, here's a little rubber cover. So I think, I think that's supposed to be there for heat resistance. A lot of heat comes off these brushes, so just to keep the rubber from catching fire probably. The rubber is kind of hurting. I may put a little silicone or something around the edges, help seal it up. Okay, next is paint. So, I did as close as I could, and now I'm going to remove that rust and shove a rag in there. You know, the key is trying to keep all the debris out of the inside of that motor. Okay, I wiped it all down with lacquer thinner. And uh, I think I'm going to shoot this end here, put that stainless steel piece back on, and I can put it upright and do the whole thing. That's about as clean as I can get it. So, time for paint. Going thing in the sky. We haven't seen much of that lately. No, it's the next day. And I got a good thick coat of paint on there. It's just cheap paint. You know, when these are uh, put together in the factory, they're just screwed on there. And it's all bare metal around the edges and this side. So the rust just goes crazy. So these are fiberglass. And they're designed to uh, you know, shield the heat from the brushes. From burning these. This rubber would just catch fire. And these, these things aren't very waterproof. So <clears throat> maybe I'll just find an inner tube and replace these with uh, something. I think I'm going to put some gasket glue or something around the edges here. So this thing's all done. I'm going to run a, a tap, tap through here, these four holes, because I had a hard time getting those bolts out. And then I'm going to leave these covers off for a couple of weeks. I might put it out in the sun one warm day. I think there's still moisture down in there somewhere. Feels dry in there, but uh, I bet you anything down the bottom here is full of full of moisture. So that job's done. I've got uh, a couple of days. Of, actually, last week I was at a sugar shack, so I'm going to tack on the little. Uh, it's like 30 seconds or 40 seconds of uh, the evaporator there, boiling sap, making maple syrup. Thanks for watching. All right, today I'm at the sugar shack. I was with my buddies a couple of days ago, and <clears throat> we got a nice big fire going. Look at that. Let's throw some more wood in.
It's awesome. No, it's not boiling. Now. There we go. Starting to go there now. 